Hey everyone, welcome. In this video I'm going to explain you how you can install event hubs. So you might have heard the news that recently they introduced a public preview of event hubs in your Azure Stack environment. So if you own a multi-node stand, you can actually kickstart this and try it yourself. So if you go to the marketplace management and you have registered an Azure Stack stamp, uh, what you see is when you go to the resource providers, that when you click Add from Azure, there is Event Hubs Public Preview. And when you click on that, there's an option to actually download it. For me, it's grayed out because I already did that for you, uh, on forehand, so we can speed up all the demos a little bit. So if we go back to the resource provider list, it actually says it's not installed yet. So what you can do when you click on it, there's a link, the resource provider has not been installed. Start installation. And really, it is a simple installation. It's even so boring, I expect a few thumbs down on this video. Because it's three steps. First, you need to install the prerequisites, which is a simple button, install prerequisites. It may take a while, so we'll leave it running in the background while we prepare the certificate that's needed up front. So you need a certificate, and the certificate uh, is actually a wildcard certificate, like you have requested for the other uh, deployments. Um, so it's wildcard.eventhubs.yourregionname.your fully qualified domain name that your hashtag is hosted underneath. So in my case, it's Redmond, which is my region, and asset.cloud, which is my FQDN. So let's go to a PowerShell window and let's look at how you can request these certificates. So I'm doing this on an ASDK host because I'm running this on my Mac and because we leverage PowerShell 5 and the modules we need, I, I chose to do it on my Azure Stack Development Kit. So if you see a lot of certificates later on, do not scare, that's because of my ASDK. So you need to install a module called Microsoft.Azure.Stack.RandomnessChecker and this will actually allow you to go and check and um, check your certificates and request, no sorry, prepare the CSR for your request of your certificates. What we do is we need to have a subject and because my stamp is actually residing in Redmond, I leave the location, state and country in, in, in the US uh, IT and organization. Okay, I'll make sure that I have a path which is underneath here. It's empty. It has an in folder, but I haven't used it yet. We need to specify the output, direct, output directory, and here you have the region name and the FQDN. So in my case, again, it's Redmond, and the external FQDN is Azure Cloud. So actually, with this module, you can prepare all the CSR for also different kind of uh, RPs. So in our case, we're going to leverage the event hubs. So we hit F8. And now we should have the request. So you copy this. Uh, you go to your uh, certificate uh, authority, I use uh, DigiCert, you paste the CSR, and it actually pulls down already the common names and stuff. So I already requested it. And with DigiCert, for example, you need some kind of text record um, authorization. I would like to be really careful with this because I made a mistake as well that the event hub uh, subdomain is part of Cloud. If you are a hosting provider that hosts Azure on the public internet, that means that you need to create this zone where you're going to create a text record in your Azure stamp temporarily, okay? If you have any more questions about it, contact me and I can help you with that. But you can actually still leverage the text record validation of DigiCert in your Azure environment. Okay, so I already actually did this and have the certificate downloaded. Um, so what you do is normally you get the uh, certificate back from um, your certificate authority and then you actually need to import it into your 
uh, host where you requested it. So you just hit import and you submit the file, next, next, done. And then somewhere you should have your certificate. And then you need to export it. So you go export, go through a wizard. Uh, I cannot export the private key anymore, but you should select export private key and then specify different options. And let me show you the options that you need to show because it's important that you also select the other options. Okay, so it's important you include all certificates, you export all the extended properties and enable certificate privacy. So those three are important to, uh, to check as well. Okay, and once you have the um, certificate, you can go back to your hashtag environment and you see we're just in time. Uh, we can actually now prepare the, the secrets. Okay, so now you just upload the certificate. You need to supply the password, make sure it's correct, otherwise it will fail eventually. You click add. And that's it. And now you need to hit install on the install research provider. So we click on that and this is it. Now you need to wait. You can track the installation by actually, well, I'm too fast now, but if we wait a few more minutes, you can track the installation from here. So let me wait until it's started with the installation. There we go. So now it will create a bunch of steps. And I won't be here the whole time waiting for it. I will pause the video and I will come back when it's all finished. So one hour and 37 minutes later, we have an installation succeeded. So that means that the research provider is successfully installed. That means that if we go to all services and we go to, I might have to refresh, all services and there you see we have the event hubs. So the next thing we wanna do is actually configure maybe some quotas. There is a default quota with 10 cores. Um, and we want to give this to users to test. So my advice is to create a separate plan, a separate offer. So if there is some issues or you want to uninstall the resource provider, you can just deallocate that part of the subscriptions. Uh, and if you add it to current subscriptions, it's, in my opinion, I think harder to remove the resource provider in the distant future. Um, so again, only for preview of things that I would recommend to change different plans and offers. So we go to plans, I'll create add, and we call this event hubs preview. And we add it to research group. Oh, sorry, I had to click next. We choose Microsoft.event hubs, hit next, specify a quota. I'll use the default for now. Hit create. And now I'm going to my offers. I'm going to create a new offer, which is event hubs preview, add it to the Redmond group, I'll not make it public, I'll choose the event of preview, no add-on plans, hit review, look at the review in the create section and hit create. All right, so that's done as well. If deploying it in the background, it'll take a few more minutes and then we're done. Okay, so the offer is deployed and what we can do now is we go to subscriptions and I can actually, oh, that's the wrong one. 
there is a tenant subscription somewhere. User subscription, there we go. That was the one I was looking for. Click add. I call this event hub preview. I'll give this to my test user. Add. I'll select the offer, event hub preview, and I'll create that. So in the next video, I will actually create the actual resource and then we're going to create a sender and a listener and see all of it in action. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care.